there. You'd solve it just like you would an equation, except you have to remember one small difference. When you multiply or divide by a negative number, you have to change the direction of the equal sign. So again, I'm going to change that problem just briefly to demonstrate that one little nuance of difference between an inequality and an equation. Again, I'm going to collect like terms. I'm going to move that net at 6 to the other side, leaving two, negative 2x two on the left by itself using the adding rule I get 4. And now I don't have any more terms to collect that are like, so I use the next step and that is divide. And I'm going to divide the get x by itself by negative 2. Well, when I divide by a negative, that changes the direction of my inequality symbol. So that's the solution for that inequality. Again, it's just like an equation, just like a linear equation, but I have to remember to change the direction when I multiply or divide by a negative in that solution process. Uh, they, they will do some graphs, so I'll demonstrate the graph of this on a, on a, on a linear graph. Solutions were all x's on this graph is less than negative 2. I just demonstrate negative 2, and it's everything to the left, and I'll probably shade that in along with the arrowhead because it keeps going left forever. How do we communicate? Are we talking about including negative 2 in that set or not? If it's strictly less than or greater than, I think probably what they'll do is they'll circle it and not color it in. If it is less than and equal to, or greater than and equal to, the difference in that graph is it will be colored in. Um, that's a subtle thing, pay attention to that, that can be a difference between selecting A or B uh, and knowing that concept. So that's in linear inequalities. Let's see where we are in time. Now I'm getting close to the bottom of my list. I just got a couple more things to talk about. Um, one last thing. Solving systems of equations. Uh, systems of equations in, in algebra uh, is simply a combination of equations together uh, that you would write in the same graph. Uh, they have different solution sets, has to be true to both. Uh, again, it's a systems of equations. Uh, and so they're going to ask you to find, when you solve for a, si a system, you're finding where those two equations uh, could cross, that common intersection point is that system uh, systems solution. So if they give you a couple of equations, let me actually just find one, see if they have one that, yeah, let's do this one instead, um, has a couple of equations and telling what the solution of the system is. I'll demonstrate that for you uh, real quickly. And then we'll be done with this portion of uh, Standards-based assessment preparation for you. And I hope you've enjoyed this video where you can back it up or speed it up and you didn't have to be here the whole hour. I hope this helps you a lot. Uh, this is called a system. And if I want to find the solution to this, then I'm going to find what point is common to both equations. When they write the system for you in this fashion, noticing that the uh, terms that are like are all stacked together. Typically what, what we want to be able to do is have the x and y's together on the numbers on the other side. But it doesn't really matter. So we don't have to change that at all. But what I want to look at is I want to choose which variable to eliminate. They call it the elimination method. Well, if I were to choose, um, wow, this is an equation. I'm going to change this so that it demonstrates these actually these two equations are exactly the same, which might be something linearly that you want to know. You can write equivalent equations by simply multiplying or dividing one equation by the same thing, dividing everything or multiplying everything by the same number, you can get an equivalent equation. If I take this equation and multiply it everything by 2, 2 becomes 6, 2 becomes 12, 2 becomes 4, those are actually the exact same solutions. So in this particular system, there's an infinite number of solutions. That means those lines graphed come right on top of each other. So what, where do they cross? Well, they cross everywhere. They cross at every single point. I'm going to change this so that it doesn't have that, but it has one solution. So 
I'm going to change one of these. Well, I, I want to try to eliminate an X here because I see they're already opposites. So I want to try to create opposites. If I doubled everything in the top now, if I multiply everything in this top equation by 2, and I'm going to write it underneath here, 2 times 3 is 6X. Now, why did I take choose 2? Because now I've got opposites. Negative 6X, positive 6X. So 2 times 6 is still the 12. And 2 times is still the 4 Y. Uh, and so now what I would just do is, is add these two equations together. Adding opposites, those disappear. That becomes 24. This becomes 8. And now I've got 8Y equals 24. I know I can divide both sides by 8 to find that Y is 3. That's one of the solutions. Again, we're looking for that single chord in the two-dimensional plane. Two points, two coordinates, and that one point, sorry, that they cross. A y coordinate now I know to be 3. To find the x, I take that value 3 and come back in any of these equations and substitute 3 for y and be able to isolate and determine what that x is. So let's do that. Let's choose this first one. For no, it doesn't matter which you choose. And I'm going to take 3x plus 6 is going to equal 2 times 3. And now I've got an equation with just x. I can then solve for that again, knowing that how to solve becomes very beneficial. I find that the x coordinate there is zero. That's systems. Now they could do things where they get quadratic equations and linears mixed. Seeing where they cross, they may have more than one solution. You may have an infinite solutions. You may have no solutions. You may have parallel lines that never cross. Uh, and you may have one solution if you have two linear systems uh, to be able to look at. So, um, Ladies and gentlemen, that's algebra, functions, and graphs. The courses that you took in Algebra 1 uh, and Algebra 2, or Algebra Functions and Graphs here at the Academy, that was just some of the concepts and content that's going to be on the SBA test, the Standards Based Assessment, uh, for the mathematics at both the 10th grade and the 11th grade. Real quick, quickly, since we've got a, a little bit of time. Concepts uh, like, can you use a calculator? There will be portions of the test that you can use a calculator. Make sure you bring your own. You're familiar with it. You're not borrowing somebody else's calculator and you look at all that. I'm not familiar with where the keys are, how to make it work, because all calculators are different. So be, have a calculator that you're familiar with. Uh, if you get to a problem and it's multiple choice, uh, and man, you're just not sure how to do that, skip it. Um, go to others, make sure you bubble right, and then come back to those more difficult problems, saving those to the end. Uh, other strategies. Um, I, I, I'm told that there is, there is a formula, they will give it to you. Quadratic formula, they probably won't expect you to have memorized that. Uh, they'll probably give that to you, just be asking you to use it. Uh, there will be multiple choice bubble sheet type problems, but they'll also be open-ended. We've given you here at the Academy uh, during the Career Pathways times uh, what those rubrics are they use for those short answer and for those open-ended types of problems. Realize and understand you do not just give the answers for those. For the bubble sheets, yes, you're just giving the answer for the bubble sheet problems. But for the uh, short, short answer, short response, open-ended, they're expecting to see your work. So draw diagrams, draw pictures, show your, show your equations, show your step-to-step -step process that we ask you to practice here and demonstrate um, to be able to get to those, uh, to, to show them all they want so that you can get those extra uh, rubric points. Again, in a four-point system, we've seen that if you give the exact correct answer uh, on, a, on a math section, open ended or short response, if you, all you give is the correct answer, if it's a four-point rubric system, you're going to get one of those four points, even though you've got the right answer. Show your thinking and show your process for that. Okay? This is the Ask Academy. This has been self or uh, standards-based prep for the content of algebra, functions, and graphs. We'll see you next week for probability and statistics. Have a great day.